Welcome to your carry update brought to you by Powerfleet. I'm Mike Vincent. He's Zach Strickland. These are charts. These are numbers. Those are colors. Go. Not all numbers. Some of them are text. Some of them are text. <laughs> so uh, tender volume index here and the purple line. Uh, we took a little bump at the end of the month of September. I got it right this time. Also a quarter, too. <laughs> yeah, the end of the quarter as well. Not necessarily the dramatic push that we normally are accustomed to at the end of a quarter, mainly because what more can you expect out of those shippers? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, at this point, yeah. uh, there's just not a lot of headroom left. You're at the left. top of Everest. Where are you going? You've got 70 ships out in the port <laughs> of San Pedro. I mean, it's, yeah. there's boats stacking up everywhere. There's simply just not enough capacity, throughput, infrastructure to handle much more freight volume. Yeah. Although we did, it's almost surprising when you think about it. <laughs> that there actually, that there is actually still a peak. was still an end of quarter, end of month type. Yeah like little bump yeah <laughs> exactly know, if you look at it but we did come back down strangely uh, out of that uh if you want to call it that and now we're in the month of october which traditionally is a little bit of a you know you take a little bit of a breath and then it's peak season <laughs> you know yeah, yeah yeah there's that there's that yeah. shallow trough it's not a trough it's just a breath yeah yeah, yeah. let's look at uh let's, let's go, look let's, at, let's go with that let's look at spot rates uh to see what they did at the end of the month and they did as well tick up again these are weekly averages so of the top 100 ban rates according to truckstop.com yeah been trending higher over the last little bit and we came down out of labor day and then a slight little uptick last week not a tremendous amount uh but again it is somewhat surprising that these things still can get higher because mainly if you think about it shippers are just bidding it up and up <laughs> It's, it's yeah, not, no, that, that's exactly what it is. They're, they're yeah. bidding for capacity. So they still have to move yeah. their goods. I mean, if it costs X, it's costing yeah. X. That's just the way it is, man. It's got to move. They're not going to say forget it. Yeah, no, they have to move it. So yeah. uh, as long as capacity is as tight as it is, this does not have an upper limit. <laughs> this number no, it can doesn't. It doesn't appear high. like it yeah. th thinks it does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's moving. A little bit of an uptick. Let's look at the chart of, or the tree map, I should say, of the, the let's, length oh yeah, let's do that and break it down. Look at the reds on this map. Now, the reds indicate week over week decline. Greens indicate week over week increase. And we just saw aggregated increase, a slight increase at that, but it's not uniform across the board. Normally, when we see those big jumps like we saw before Labor Day, this entire thing is green. Or the week after Labor Day, yes. this entire thing is red. Yes. That's not the case at all. And it's, and it's not just about fragmentation in terms of the markets themselves, but it's fragmentation inside of the market. So you have certain uh, Chicago to Kansas City, 2% up. Chicago to Denver, 6.9% down. <laughs> yeah, no, carriers yeah. want to go where they want to go. They exactly. know where the loads are. Mm -hmm. It's a buck and a half to go to L.A. from Dallas. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. It's 350 to come back. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, you, you, you know, we're pricing into Los Angeles still, obviously. Uh, $1.44 from Salt Lake City to Los Angeles, the reverse of that. Uh, much more expensive if I can find it on the board, which I can't off the top of my head. But uh, 426. Yeah, anything coming out of Los Angeles has a premium on it because you're paying for round trip rates. Sure. Because the overwhelming flow of freight is coming from west to east. <laughs> and over the weekend, it went up to like 26% rejection rate on the long haul. Yes, long haul is growing out of the Southern California markets. Yeah. That. So all that means is that you're going to remove a lot more capacity. <laughs> Yeah. They're, they're, they're not oh, yeah, going yeah, yeah, into yeah. warehouses well, as and they leave, Once they go long haul, they're not even in the region, so no. it's a longer time to cycle back. Exactly. That's so where you start more, getting that ping pong across exactly, the country. Exactly. And, and speaking of the ping pong, let's look at the map. Uh, oh, let's do that. Of the weighted rejection index. And you can see out there, Ontario, uh, Los Angeles, both showing in the blue of the weighted rejection index. So that means that right now, as we're speaking, tender rejection rates over the week, or week over week, have increased significantly out of this market, wow. <laughs> out of this area. Yeah. Um, what there's... happened to the Cubs, dude? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chicago <laughs> in the dark red here, or Juliet, actually. That's Juliet. Oh, is that Juliet? Okay. Yeah, Chicago and Juliet, kind of that tandem of the Chicago market that is bifurcated there. But both of them showing easing, significant easing. Uh, so a lot of that pressure that we saw in the tender rejection index yeah. at the end of the month probably came out of this market. Um, Chicago, of course, right. a big throughput, a big gateway into the east. Sure. Traditionally, from the rails, you got the oh, yeah, largest yeah, yeah. intermodal right there. Yeah. Uh, presence there in the United States, the biggest rail lane in the United States for intermodal, yeah. going from Los Angeles to this. Of course, been a little bit limited over the last few months because the drage capacity and the port capacity, sure. All, sure. All, all things kind of limiting that throughput there, piling up in the uh, around Chicago and 
maybe they had a big action like amount of push uh, at the end of the month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very possibility, but it's very, very, uh, yeah, very loose got, over there. And I saw, yeah, you were talking about uh, over there. In yeah, the Harrisburg. northeast showing some signs of easing. Now, this should be what you would expect. This should be the map that I would expect for the rest of the year almost. Is like maybe there'll be times where we're going to ease. It's not always going to get tighter and tighter, but Los Angeles tight, northeast getting looser mm -hmm. <laughs> because that is the predominant flow of freight in the United States. It is. This is mm -hmm. where the capacity ends mm -hmm. up. It gets empty. Yep. It, and coming back, there's not a lot of long haul right back into this no. market, right? So this stays tight. That remains easy because you get top, you exactly. get stuck in that northeast whirlpool a little bit when you get up <laughs> exactly. there, right? Excellent stuff. Thank you so much, Zach. Mm -hmm. We'll catch up with you a little bit later.